Chapter 7 Oh, my God! It's Bosch Ronsenberg! Praise be the Imperial Courts! Bosch lives! Shut up, you little! Tell us Bosch! What was it like to kill the king? Did he beg for his life? Fran Fran rolled her eyes and started toward Vaughn, but the boy quickly took hold of Balthier's collar and pulled him between himself and the Vieira. Wait, didn't Marquis Andor say you were dead? Vaughn asked loudly while Balthier pushed him away. Was he lying to us? Is Andor working with Arcadia? Vaughn, Balthier warned, noting the gathering crowd, shut it, or I'll shut it for you. Vaughn stepped back. What's wrong, Bosch? You're an Arcadian hero. Aren't you proud? Don't say I didn't warn you. Before Balthier could land his punch, he was restrained by two Bougerban men, who eyed him suspiciously and questioned him in low, harsh tones. Captain Ronsenberg, is it? What? Balthier squirmed. No. He's out of his pathetic little mind. Vaughn laughed before being apprehended himself. Fran looked ready to jump but clearly wasn't willing to risk it in broad daylight with hordes of Imperials walking the streets. He doesn't sound Landisian, one of the men whispered. Well, we don't sound Dalmaskan, the other replied. Balthier groaned. Vaughn's plan had worked. A little too well. Seeing his sister taken from him once again, Vaughn had decided to enlist the aid of the resistance, he would tip them off about little Monty if they agreed to return Pinello safe and sound, and settled upon doing it in the only way he knew, clumsily. He had gathered from the conversation he witnessed in Robin Astor that the Marquis financed the resistance, and what better way to draw them out of hiding than by slandering their backbone. The resistance hated Bosch, so Vaughn thought it a fine idea. Balthier disagreed, and seeing as how he had promised to save Pinello only to get her into even hotter water, Vaughn felt him more than deserving of Bosch's reputation. Though, he did have to admit that he felt a few pangs of regret as the resistance members escorted Balthier and him down the street, leaving Fran behind after her partner gave her a shrewd nod. Therein lied another problem. Vaughn still had trouble discerning the exact nature of Fran and Balthier's relationship. He had assumed upon first meeting them that they were involved romantically, but after watching them together for a few days, it no longer seemed so. At times, they didn't even seem friends, merely partners working for their own benefit. Still at others, they would appear to have an incredibly deep level of understanding giving each other knowing glances and proceeding as if they'd discussed the situation at length, referencing inside jokes until the conversation seemed completely incoherent to Vaughn, and jointly operating the straw as fluently as a single person while speaking of entirely unrelated matters. It stirred in Vaughn an odd feeling of paranoia, even more so than the few lines of Vieran they had exchanged in the Dalmask and Esther Sands when returning from Nalbana. At any rate, Vaughn felt certain that leaving the Vieira out this time would serve only to simplify things, as was soon be proven true when the resistance soldiers forced them through a crowded tavern into the back room and up a flight of stairs. There sat a resistance lieutenant, penning a letter while another soldier took his leave with some level of gratitude toward their previous exchange. Lieutenant, Vaughn's escort stated respectfully. He looked up and then stood, clearly curious. What business do we have with them? They've been discrediting the Marquis. Discrediting? Balthier's escort stepped forward. 
Seems these little rats are spreading word that the Kingslayer is on the loose. Oh, really? The lieutenant asked. Well... Vaughn stuttered. It's... Well, it's kind of complicated. I'm sure. He gave his subordinates a nod and they brought Vaughn and Balthier farther in, closing the door behind them. Now. He went on, just how exactly have they been going about this? Announcing to the whole island that Ronsenberg is alive and well, one of the men explained. I see. He folded his arms and looked the two over critically. So the Empire has stooped even to public defamation to increase their power. What? Vaughn exclaimed. We're not working with the Empire. Balthier rolled his eyes. Then you hold a personal grudge against the Marquis? No. Vaughn insisted. I'm with the Resistance. I mean, I not with you, but I... Calm yourself, for God's sake. The lieutenant groaned. I didn't know how else to find you. No sympathizer would dare create so vile a rumor. But it's true. I'll believe it when I see it. The argument suddenly broke as the door reopened. Today must be your lucky day, then. All heads turned upon hearing the Landisian accent, finding to great astonishment that the Kingslayer himself stood in the doorway. What are you doing here? asked Vaughn. He cocked his head. I heard I had been arrested again, had to see for myself. You've got your brother's sense of humor, Balthier groaned. All right. Bosch replied, I followed you from the mines. Actually, I was about to put an end to your little display before these two beat me to it. Perhaps we acted too soon, one of the soldiers added. You have a lot of nerve showing yourself here, the lieutenant growled. Why not take your freedom and run? You really think so little of me? Bosch asked back. I'm not going anywhere until I've cleared my name. The lieutenant released a scoffing laugh. You dare claim innocence? Yes, as a matter of fact. I can prove it if you'll give me the chance. Vaughn tried to step forward, but the soldiers kept him in place. Balthier looked on silently, suddenly interested. I'll give you nothing, the lieutenant insisted. To clear your name would be to ruin Andor's. The Marquis truly thought I had been executed, Bosch explained. He wasn't told of the lie until after he'd made the announcement. A dirty trick. Ask him yourself. He still doesn't know I'm alive. He shook his head. The Empire stoops ever lower in its conquest. All the more reason to strengthen the resistance while the opportunity is upon us. I take it you are here about the General. Bosch nodded. Why else? The Lieutenant, however, did not mirror his resolve, instead folding his arms and leaning against the desk beside him. Why not search Robin Astor? The Shiva docked in Robin Astor two days ago, and only stayed for an hour. Vane wouldn't call it ahead of the fleet without good reason. Then you think Amalia is here? The lieutenant asked, briefly raising a suspicious eyebrow. Perhaps, said Bosch. If Vane is so eager to move her, though... The chances are better that she was here. Either way, we can offer you no help. 
so I was told in Rabanaster, but... We operate separate from Dalmasca, allies, not friends. He strode toward the window and peered out beyond the drawn drapes before letting them fall once more. Just because Azelas trusts you doesn't mean we do. Bosch withheld a groan, clearly tiring of such obstacles. I hardly expect you to, and I'm not entirely sure Azelas does, either. I'm in this purely for Amalia. You'll have to forgive me for doubting the validity of your faithfulness. Had it not been for my negligence, her husband would still be alive. I owe this to her. At this the lieutenant sighed, still distrustful of the Landisian, but obviously unwilling to leave Amalia to her certain doom. I am very sorry, Bosch, he said slowly, but there is nothing we can do. Even should you prove truth in your words, we have heard nothing of Amalia since the fate. It is unlikely she still lives. Bosch shook his head slightly. I cannot give up until I have proof. The Marquis may give it to you, the lieutenant conceded, if you are willing to meet with him. I should like nothing more. Then I shall arrange it. He glanced at Vaughn and Balthier, and attempted to withhold a smirk. I'm sure you have a few words for your friends here. Stay as long as you wish. Bosch nodded, and the lieutenant left the room, the soldiers stepping out after him and closing the door securely behind them. Balthier immediately spoke up, let me start by saying it's all his fault. Shut up, Vaughn groaned. What are you doing all the way out here? Bosch replied. You're going to get yourself killed. It's a long story, said Vaughn. Basically, Prince Lamont's got my sister, and I don't know how to get her back. You've met Lamont? Bosch asked with a plainly skeptical tone. Yeah. Vaughn answered. You know him? I know of him. Gabranth is one of his security guards, Balthier clarified. Can't say I've ever met anyone else who knows, Bosch went on. Yeah, said Vaughn, it doesn't make sense. There are only three princes, there would have been a huge celebration if there was another one. Monty is Arcadia's little secret, Balthier said with mild distaste. Gramis slated him never to rule. Why? Vaughn asked. Because Vane has a tendency to take out the competition. The boy furrowed his brow. How do you? Look, Vaughn, Balthier cut in. I like you. Really, I do. But if you so much as think about telling the resistance about Lamont, I'm just gonna have to kill you. Uh. Please don't think me any more suspicious, said Bosch, but it is probably best that he not be revealed to the resistance, for his own safety. Oh, yeah, of course, Vaughn defended. I just... Well, he's got my little sister with him, and I don't know where he's taking her. His Highness doesn't have the opportunity to make many friends with the way his father confines him, Bosch explained. I'm sure he has no ill intentions for her. But... He's... Arcadian? Balthier asked. Vaughn shook his head. Ah, you know what I mean. If you really want to see her, Bosch went on, the Marquis may be able to arrange something. You'll let me come with you? Vaughn asked. 
he nodded. Only if you promise to behave yourself. No problem. Balthier smirked and turned to Bosch. You do know this is suicide, right? Well, he seems to be bringing you good luck, Bosch replied. Hey! exclaimed Vaughn. Then are you coming back to Robin Astor with me or not? asked Balthier. Don't I have to? Vaughn replied. Law of exchange or something. You're the one who got us into this, said Balthier. But you got Pinello into it, said Vaughn. And I got Pinello out of it. And that was a fine thanks she gave me, by the way. Vaughn rolled his eyes with a groan. I'll see that you and your sister get back home, Bosch offered. Just be warned that Lamont may not let her go. At this, Vaughn's eyes momentarily widened. He can do that. He's the Emperor's son, he can do anything. And then some, Balthier added. At any rate, said Bosch, it's all dependent on whether or not the Marquis can be of any use. Don't get your hopes up. Right, Vaughn replied. This Marquis? said Balthier. He's old Watts, her name's uncle, right? Princess Ashalia's mother's brother, Bosch answered with a nod. Legally, next in line to Dalmascus' throne. I see. The pirate folded his arms and thought. And the resistance is this eager to work with him even though he's friendly with the Empire. Bosch cocked his head. What are you getting at? I don't know, but there's bound to be money in it somewhere. Isn't your business here done? Vaughn stated pressingly. For now, at least, Balthier replied, heading for the door. Good luck, gents. They had just under an hour to wait, as the Marquis proved most eager to meet with the supposedly dead King Slayer, but Vaughn had made good use of the time pestering Bosch with all manner of questions pertaining to the resistance in the army and the since-lost order of Dalmaskin knights. Bosch humored him, though, for he hadn't allowed Vaughn to tag along solely for Pinello's sake, indeed, he felt confident that she was quite safe. It had been Vaughn's penchant for danger that roused his protectiveness. For whatever reason, Vaughn had a knack for reminding him of the admittedly feisty Prince Rassler, and Bosch simply could not bear to see the boy meet a like fate. By this token, he also saw a bit of himself in the boy, and hoped to spare him some of the less fortunate adventures of his own youth. Bosch had always had to learn from experience, sometimes several experiences. It was unfortunately one of the many things he and the late Prince Rassler had in common, and it had landed them both in plenty of regrettable situations. But being that he had failed Vaughn's brother in the past, this seemed a decent way to make amends. In truth, the only reason he remembered Rex so clearly was because of his age, he had been barely older than Vaughn when he died. He had told Bosch once that he had younger siblings to feed, so he had allowed him the same responsibilities as the older soldiers, but this had taught him a grave lesson, and he wasn't about to let Vaughn fall into the same trap. When at last they were taken to the Marquis' estate, Vaughn ceased his questions about his own brother and hesitantly brought up Bosch's, though after the previous conversation, Bosch almost regarded the change of subject with relief. So, what'll you do if you ever catch up with your brother? I'm not entirely sure. Vaughn looked at him with clearly evident shock. Haven't you ever thought about it? Not so much. But... 
If Lamont's here, doesn't that mean Gabranth's here, too? I don't know, Bosch said tiredly. Sure would make things easier. No kidding. This might not be his shift, though, Judge Drace watches over him too. Two judges for one little kid. Apparently, he's not prone to staying in one place for too long. I'm amazed the Emperor even let him leave Arcades, to be honest. It doesn't seem right that he'd send only one to keep tabs on him while he's out of town. Weren't the others looking out for Vane? Bosch shook his head. The others hate Vane. Maybe Grammis was counting on that. Before they could discuss the matter any further, Marquis Andor arrived, accompanied by two guards who he asked to wait outside. Vaughn had no idea how to greet such a man, but Bosch seemed to maintain his usual attitude, so he decided not to worry about it, though in the back of his mind, he could not allay his feelings of reverence for the man who by all rights should have been named the steward of Dalmasca two years ago. The prince and princess had left no heir. The rumors had spread far and wide, first that he was impotent, and then that she was barren, but no excuse could solve the problem. With Rassler's death, the princess became stewardess of Nubradia by her marriage, though her position proved shaky at best. Upon her death, the inheritance passed to Halim by his sister's marriage, though he had enough to worry about with his own country and was only minimally accepted by the people of Dalmasca, and generally ignored by the people of Nubradia. Even if he took the throne, it would do nothing more than enrage the empire, and he knew full well that the armies would not have united under him. All he could do to prevent further bloodshed was step aside and let Arcadia claim its prize. However, his compliance had spared Bujerba a hostile takeover, so far, and though he had no choice but to do the empire's bidding, he still retained some power, enough, at least, to calm his people and prevent riots and rebellions. He regarded the pair with flat seriousness, placing his hands behind his back and stepping toward them, though still maintaining a fair distance that belied his distrust. Captain Ronsenberg, he said sullenly. Forgive me for not welcoming your return with higher spirits. I've grown quite used to it, Bosch replied. The Marquis turned to Vaughn curiously. And Miss Pinello's brother, I take it. Yeah, he answered with a nod. Is she all right? Perfectly. She and the prince have been hunting down every bit of fun to be had on this island. Though, if you associate with the likes of him, I'm not sure you'll be permitted to see her. Vaughn turned his eyes to the floor and ran a hand through his hair. Yeah, well... Desperate times and all that. He means no harm to Master Lamont, Bosch added. We're here on a different matter. It had better be a good one, Ando retorted with an eloquent growl. You are the sword veins strung above my head. Once he realizes you're free, we'll all be powerless to stop him. He'll leave nothing to chance, Bosch agreed. I've heard as much. But please believe I haven't come here as a threat to you. Not intentionally perhaps. It was not so very long ago that I announced you had been executed. And had you not, it likely would have happened. I came to help the resistance. Now the Marquis folded his arms and looked upon Bosch with almost sarcastic interest. In what way? Bosch briefly set his jaw before speaking. A leader of the resistance has fallen into imperial hands a woman by the name of Amalia. I would rescue her, but I need your help. You understand I've my position to consider, the Marquis said slowly. Please, Bosch insisted. 
We are lost without her. Andor sighed, relaxing his posture only slightly. I realize your struggle, but I'm afraid I can be of little service to you. I have heard nothing from the Imperials of a rebel leader being captured. If she was not sent to Nalbano with her followers, she has likely been put to death. They would not kill her, she's far too valuable. Clearly, if even you have revealed yourself to protect her. Even me. Captain Vossler came to me not more than a few hours ago, with both your concern and your resolve. Bosch had to resist releasing a childish huff. Checking up on me. Can you blame him? Ando replied. He was most hesitant to explain the details of the lady's position, though, which of course struck me as odd, given that I had never beforehand heard of her. I'm afraid this issue demands a certain level of secrecy. Ah, uh, yes. Ando began a slow, thoughtful pacing. Secrecy where my great generosity is concerned, but not where convicted traitors are. I don't suppose there's anything I might say to earn your trust. Bosch said with fleeting eye contact. Indeed, there is not, he answered. But as I said, I understand your desperation, and therefore I will instruct you just as I did Captain Vossler, if your leader is still alive, she will be brought to the Emperor himself, and the only one other than Vane whom His Highness would trust with such a task is his favored judge. Lord Geese, who just happens to be here in Bujerba this very moment. I'm afraid I must be slow to trust such irony. As was Vossler, but the facts remain, neither Vane nor Geese has crossed Arcadian borders since the attack, Amalia is here or still in Dalmasca. Then Geese will answer to me before he answers to Gramis. So quick to action. The Marquis scoffed, ceasing his pacing. Have you forgotten that Geese is the one who led the conquest of Landis? He commands the entire Eighth Fleet now. If I didn't know any better, said Bosch, I would think you are trying to discourage me. Not in the least. True, he normally serves aboard the Leviathan but with the other four elite judges assigned to Lord Vane's security detail, the Emperor has temporarily entrusted Geese with the protection of his younger son. Bosch cocked his head. Gabranth can't be too happy about that. Neither is Geese. Now is the best time to challenge him, while he is distracted, and too cautious to risk injury to the Prince. At any rate, you stand a better chance with him than you do with the Emperor. But the fleet is gathering, they'll be gone by the time I can assemble the resistance. The Marquis smiled faintly, but maintained his somewhat arrogant air. They do not make straight for Arcadia just yet. Master Lamont's cortege has rejoined the Imperial Detachment, and I am told they will depart for Ravanaster this eventide. There he will be placed back in the care of his usual supervisors. So either I face Geese now on my own while the prince is aboard, Bosch concluded, or later fully prepared when he's willing to strike. A double-edged sword. Indeed, Andor answered with a grim nod. Unable to take the suspense, Vaughn stepped forward shyly. Hey, um... I'll go with you. What? Bosch asked. If you go now, Vaughn explained. You won't be on your own. Bosch shook his head. This will be dangerous, Vaughn. I know, but, well, I'm pretty much bound to end up in the resistance anyway, and I still have to find Pinello, so... Just let me come with you. 
and now the captain smiled mischievously. You're not going to give me a choice, are you? Nope. Von exclaimed with pride. Very well, then. He turned to Andor with a mild look of expectation. I don't suppose you could get us aboard the Leviathan in a timely manner. Only under one condition, he replied. Name it. You must swear to me that no harm will come to Prince Lamont from your interference, his father would have both Dalmasca and Bujerba crushed in retribution. I would not dare count a child among enemies, Bosch assured him. You have my word. Then you have my aid, he conceded, but surely the exigencies of position are not lost on you. Why indeed, you should find the enemy's chains an easy burden to bear. If you are quite ready, I could have it done right now. Bosch momentarily looked to Vaughn, who shrugged with a smile, then nodded his thanks to the Marquis. No better time than the present, as they say. Andor responded with an obliging smirk, then opened the door and spoke to the guards outside, summon the guard. They did so, and he once more turned to Bosch and Vaughn as footsteps sounded in the hallway. Well, he said with thinly veiled exhaustion, you're going to at least make it look good, aren't you? Of course, Bosch replied with a nod as he and Vaughn drew their swords. A group of soldiers promptly arrived, finding just the scene expected before them, and quickly overcame the Marquis' attackers. Andor instructed that they be taken to Judge Geese, and for the second time that day, Vaughn was hauled off to meet with someone who could very well kill him. However, he had oddly grown quite used to it since his misadventure at the fate, and his fear lessened in the shadow of his curiosity. Bosch seemed to recognize the excitement it stirred in him, being away from home and digging up trouble at every turn, but had clearly seen his fill of it over the years and harbored little if any anxiety for the future. Once cuffed, they were led off the estate and taken to the Aerodome a short distance away at the eastern end of the island, where the Eighth Fleet remained docked. Many of the lesser ships had already taken to the sky, but the flagship, the Leviathan, idled in the hangar, its massive magicite engines humming and its high steel frame gleaming. The thrum of the engines reverberated in Vaughn's chest, rendering his ears temporarily useless and briefly causing him to squint his eyes as the air whirred by him as the guards shoved him up the boarding ramp. Even Bosch grew ill at ease for a moment, having served his time in the military on the ground but he gave no sign of regret and indeed eagerly looked forward to at last regaining his reputation within the resistance. As they were led through the winding metallic halls of the Leviathan, the ship lurched and started forward, its movements eliciting groans from its depths that echoed throughout its well-worn chambers and panels. Their final destination was the command bridge, a large, cage-like room floored with metal meshing and surrounded on one half with broad windows and on the other with scuffed steel. At the controls were several Arcadian soldiers, and there stood in the center of the room Judge Geese, a morbidly dark and imposing figure in his polished armor, but of greatest note were his guests, Fran and Bolthier, who stood casually before him in conversation as the prisoners entered amid their guards. Bald here? Vaughn asked, eyes widening childishly as both pirates regarded him with only mild concern. Geese nodded to a soldier at his left. Fetch Amalia. The soldier promptly obeyed, and Bolthier gave Vaughn a slight smirk. Well, now, he said. You're a bit early, aren't you? Vaughn could find no words with which to respond, but Geese caustically addressed Bolthier before he had the chance, I will not stand for your musings, coward. Did I not warn you of what would occur should you return empty-handed? Your Honor, Bolthier replied extravagantly, such a lack of faith is insulting to my reputation. 
he took the dusk shard from his pocket and held it aloft cockily. I'm more than prepared to hold up my end of the bargain if you hold up yours. You son of a bitch! Vaughn shouted. Oh, boy! Balthier groaned. Vaughn fought his restraints, but the guards on either side of him held him firm. You had it all along. No, the pirate explained dryly, Pinello had it all along. Why else do you think I'd share the spotlight with you for five whole days? Enough. Geese interrupted. How you retrieved it is of no concern here. Just hand it over. Balthier drew the stone back with a smirk and feigned offense. Now, now, Geese, you gave me your word. And I shall keep it, the judge insisted. Give me the stone and I'll see that you disappear. And Francesca? Likewise. And the bounties? Gone. Your ship will fly under Arcadian colors, no questions asked. Balthier folded his arms skeptically. All well and good, but how do I know you won't kill me the moment you have it? After considering this for a moment with obvious insolence, Geese turned to one of the higher-ranking officers on deck. Captain. Prepare an atomos for our friends. The captain saluted silently and headed toward the nearest door, but Balthier sneered at the judge's choice of words, tossing him the stone harshly as he and Fran strode after the soldier. Oh, have a little dignity. Here's your precious rock. God help you if our paths ever cross again. Vaughn jumped forward desperately, but was no match for his human restraints. Balthier. It was fun while it lasted, kid. The door closed. Now, Geese continued, coldly examining Bosch and Vaughn, who are these poor wretches, and what have they done to earn my company? They are insurgents, your honor, one of the guards reported. Caught red-handed in an assassination attempt against the Marquis. Though his face remained hidden behind the judicial helmet, Geese seemed genuinely surprised by this, no doubt having suspected Andor of aiding the resistance. Truly? He asked. He has sold our independence for his own gain, Bosch replied. Quickly catching on, Vaughn added, he'll burn for cooperating with scum like you. Hmm. Geese placed his hands behind his back in the usual overly dignified Arcadian manner. A strike against the Marquis, or a plot to recover your general? We do not answer to the insurgents, said Bosch. Our freedom is our own. The judge released a short, mocking laugh, but had no time for a response, for the guard he had sent earlier returned at that moment. The prisoner, my lord. The soldier's call drew the attention of all present to Amalia, who he escorted in not as a prisoner, but rather as a guest. She stood obediently at his side, free of chains or irons, dressed in a pearly white Arcadian-style gown and matching high-heeled shoes, quite a drastic change from the sand-dusted pants and work shirt Vaughn had first seen her in that night at the palace. However. Her biting attitude hadn't been altered in the least, as became evident upon her first sight of Bosch. You. Skillfully negotiating the flowing skirt of her dress, she stomped up to the Landisian much in the fashion of a tigress advancing on one who has threatened her cubs. Geese lurched forward, ordering his men to restrain her, and Bosch tried to draw back but was securely controlled by the soldiers on either side of him. Amalia! Slap! By instinct, Vaughn squeezed his eyes shut, 
but her onslaught was momentarily halted by the soldier who had brought her in. Yet, as he opened his eyes, he bore witness to the painful, if not somewhat amusing, sight of Amalia landing her knee square in the soldier's groin, and quickly closed them again. After what you've done? She shouted as a soldier left Vaughn's side to calm her. How dare you? She elbowed the poor man in the gut and turned her venomous glare to Vaughn. And you? Haven't you shamed our country enough? A third soldier came to the rescue, abandoning his post beside Bosch in light of the situation, and Geese, too, took hold of her free arm while the other two men recovered. Come now, the judge mused. You forget your manners. Why did you bring me here? She demanded, shaking him off harshly. I have no business with a thief or a murderer. Perhaps not, but you do have business with this. He proudly held the dusk shard aloft, instantly wiping the anger from her face and replacing it with pure astonishment. How did you? Thieves can occasionally come in handy. Amalia shook her head slightly, aware now that she had effectively blown their fragile cover, but more concerned with the national treasure before her for the time being. Release them, she ordered. Or at the very least lock them up away from here, they have no part in this. Why so protective? Geese asked. They are citizens of Dalmasca. Is this not their national treasure? The Dusk Shard. Bosch scoffed. How in the name of God did Bolthir get hold of that? Desperate times call for desperate measures, Geese explained. You can always trust a coward to look out for himself. This is appalling, Amalia sneered. To treat so valuable a thing with so little respect. Valuable, indeed, said Geese, producing a knife from his belt. According to legend, this stone's power was infused by the very creators of Ivalice. It warrants the quality of blood, it will recognize its rightful owner. The soldier that held her in place forced her arm out and opened her palm for the judge, who quickly drew the blade across it. Don't, Amalia whimpered. But her words went unheeded, as Geese placed the dusk shard in her bleeding hand. She closed her eyes, and for a moment it almost seemed as though Geese's could be seen glinting with pride through his steel helmet as the stone began to glow a vivid crimson emitting with its sheen a soft moan like the humming of a distant choir. Bosch hung his head with a sigh of defeat. Damn! Well, well, well! Geese gloated. Lord Vane will be very eager to speak with you, Princess. I've already said all I have to say to him, she replied softly turning her head from her hand as he removed the stone. Vaughn looked to Bosch. You knew. He shook his head dismally. Azelas will never trust me now. Not one to let the emotions of others toy with his own, he squeezed the princess's hand over a cup given to him by yet another soldier gathering a few drops of blood while the wound remained fresh. Lend us a bit more, he mused. I'd rather not have you running your mouth when we prove your survival to Emperor Gramis. She shot him a scowl and yanked her arm free. I would first and foremost inform him that his prized son wanders about a warship unprotected. This got Gisa's attention and he leveled his own scowl on her with piercing ferocity, though his voice remained threateningly calm. And how is that you should come to know of such things? He demanded. I've spent the last half hour talking with him and his lady friend, she answered with cat-like matter-of-factness. 
Charming kids. I'd hate to see anything ill befall them due to your inattentiveness. Is that a threat? No. It's a likelihood. Though the judge clearly wished to grant no form of victory to the princess, he could not deny the truth of her words, and thus leaned back as though to consider his options before speaking once more. The lady has a point. Guards. Several jumped at his command. Take them away. Lady Ashalia is to be quartered separately. A pair of guards stepped toward Ashalia, but she glowered at them when they attempted to restrain her, instead walking obediently between them as they led her out of the room. A quartet of guards handled Bosch and Vaughn, one leading and one taking up the rear while the other two stood at the prisoners' sides, keeping them entirely surrounded. Geese turned to yet another pair of soldiers with far greater severity than was their due. And you two go attend to Master Lamont? As all of the soldiers obeyed, the atmosphere claimed somewhat and happenings about the vessel seemed to return to normal. Vaughn and Bosch were led down several corridors to the rear of the ship, and the boy quickly regretted his course of actions, for he now feared that he stood no chance of finding Pinello. Bosch's mood, however, seemed to have lifted considerably in spite the irons binding his wrists once again and the bright red mark on his cheek that the princess's slap had left in its wake. Vaughn remained wary, but took this as a good sign. Presently, a lone soldier passed by them, inspecting each room on his way. Lamont! Lamont, this isn't funny. Oh, good, Bosch said with a slight smile, they've lost him already. Good, Vaughn replied. He's got my sister with him. A distraction, remember? Bosch told him with no attempt to hide their conversation from their escorts. From what Noah's told me, that boy could elude an entire army. The soldier behind them cut in harshly. Shut up, dregs. To this, the two prisoners glanced at each other, and then spoke in unison, Make us. As you wit. No sooner did the guard lunge to strike did Bosch and Vaughn trip him, each turning to disarm and floor their escorts. Bosch overcame his opponent with expert speed and quickly assisted Vaughn in decking his own but both were taken aback as the soldier that led them knocked the first unconscious before he could rise to join the battle. Faster than I expected, he said, his voice jogging Vaughn's memory with minimally cloudy effectiveness. Azellas. Bosch groaned. The captain removed his Arcadian helmet and produced a set of keys from his belt. The Marquis has been busy. Not lightly did I beg his aid, Bosch replied, holding out his bound wrists. Is this really the best you could come up with? It was short notice, all right. Azellas turned to Vaughn and unlocked his irons as well. You again? It's a long story, the boy sighed. Listen, he explained clearly uncomfortable with offering up an apology. Asha's safety has been reliant on my paranoia for the past two years. I could trust nobody. Don't worry, Bosch assured him with a nod. You did your duty, and mine for me. Azella smirked. Though I must admit it was quite satisfying to see her bitch slap you like that. Don't push it. Right, he said, relieving one of the unconscious soldiers of his sword, undoubtedly to properly arm Ashalia. I'm getting her out. I need your help. Of course. This way. Vaughn followed them down the hall without fully comprehending the conversation, 
but Rex had told him of the understanding developed between soldiers and decided against hesitating. The princess had mentioned speaking with Monty's lady friend, so for the moment, finding Ashalia meant finding Pinello, and even finding Ashalia alone proved a worthy goal in his eyes, for her survival surely meant freedom for Dalmasca, at least he fancied it might. She's not going to kill me, is she? Bosch asked as they began searching the many holding rooms. Difficult to say. Azelas answered. She was angry as hell when they announced you were to be executed. Wanted to do it herself. Bosch mused. So far every room had been empty, which did little to calm Vaughn's nerves. Exactly, said Azelas. But once it had supposedly been done. Well, don't tell her you know this but she cried for hours. So you think I stand a chance? Maybe. Just don't turn your back on her. Bosch laughed. They soon arrived with great relief in the proper room, where Pinello and Monty busied themselves bandaging Ashalia's injured hand through the bars of her cell, clearly oblivious to her true identity. Seeing that none had heard them enter, the three intruders approached with all due caution, Azela's interrupting Monty and Pinello's confused discussion on the practice of amateur medicine. Your Majesty! Ashalia and Monty both turned to Azela's expectantly. Ah! He went on. Both Your Majesties! Monty and Pinello looked to the princess. What? Pinello asked. Pinello, said Vaughn, that's the princess. But... Pinello stuttered. You were. What's he doing here? Ashalia interrupted upon noticing Bosch. Highness, please, he begged, we will talk later. Later. She growled. I will not place my trust in the sword of a defector. Yet trust his sword we must, said Azelas. I see no other way. Princess. Monty asked, as Bosch carefully closed the door to the hall. Of Dalmasca. Yes, Ashalia answered. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. Don't worry, he said with a smile. I don't tell people, either. Halim will be so happy to see you. Oh. Uh. That may have to wait, Azela stepped in at her speechlessness. For now it is better that the Marquis not know. It would create a conflict of interest, given his position in hers. Given his position in hers, Monty replied, I doubt much would change. Now Vaughn stepped in. You know. Monty smirked. I'm not with the insurgents, if that's what you mean. Resistance, said Ashalia. Well, then, Azelas continued, given your position in ours, Perhaps it is best that you not know. I already do, said Monty. Now are you going to bust her out or are you just going to wait around for geese to show up? Hmm. Azelas folded his arms almost proudly. You're a solider all right. Where are the keys? Asked Vaughn. The guard took them, Monty answered taking a pin from Pinello's hair and quickly setting to work on the lock with it. I can do it. The princess gazed at him uncertainly, her gratitude overshadowed by her suspicion. You would really let me leave, knowing who I am. By all rights, you ought not even to exist, said Monty. Technically I'm not letting anyone leave. 
Well put. Geez, said Vaughn, looking on in wonder. Hey, Bosh, you could learn a thing or two from this guy. God knows I need it, said Bosh. You're Gabranth's brother, aren't you? Monty asked. Yes, Bosh answered. I thought you were twins. We are. Then why do you look older? He considered this for a moment, then replied, plainly, prison. Oh, said Monty. He said you were dead. He says lots of things. Ashalia narrowed her eyes threateningly at Bosch. Twins. A screeching alarm abruptly echoed throughout the steel halls of the ship, accompanied by the flashing of red emergency lights in each and every room, interrupting them and fostering a sudden need for a quick escape. Monty, however, kept adorably calm, perhaps a bit too used to being caught in the act, and turned his eyes upward with curious exhaustion. Uh oh! He groaned. Geese must be on to us. Azellas held his head wearily as though he'd been hit by a sudden migraine. Just what we need. I think I've got it. There. A small metallic click sounded their victory, and Monty pulled the barred gate open. Nice work! exclaimed Pinello. Thank you, Lamont, Ashalia added. He smiled brightly, handing the hairpin back to the now-blushing Pinello. No problem. All right, then, said Azelas, taking the princess's hand and leading her out of the cell. We track back, commandeer a ship and make our escape. Ashalia nodded. Right. As they headed for the door, Pinello turned to Lamont. Monty. You should go back. I don't want you to get in trouble because of us. You're going with them? He asked, tilting his head slightly. I'm sorry, she said. I just don't belong here. I understand. But... W, would you... He glanced downward and let out a breath, clearly lost for words, then took the manufactured nithysite from his pocket and held it out to her. Here. I want you to keep it. She took it hesitantly, searching his eyes for some ulterior motive, some sign that he was an Arcadian, a Solidor. Doesn't Dr. Sid need this? He'll get by. It's brought me good luck up till now, maybe it will do the same for you. At last finding no reason to fear or hate him, she clutched the stone affectionately to her heart and placed her other hand on his shoulder. Thanks, Monty. You're my hero. With this, she gave him a quick kiss on the cheek, which he answered with a grimace and a childish eeyo. Come on. Vaughn urged, tugging on her arm. She went along with him, but managed to call over her shoulder before disappearing into the many winding tunnels of the Leviathan. Goodbye. Monty just stood motionless, dumbfounded and smiling, staring after her even as she left his sight. The Leviathan's docking bay held several smaller crafts, and more than one open entryway exposed the fresh night sky, lit but minimally by the recently fallen sun. The floating isles of Bujerba remained visible on the horizon, within the distance of an Atomos, the small ferry ships used to transport soldiers and personnel between the larger vessels. However, each of the ships remained locked, and even if they'd still had access to Monty's skills, they found themselves with no opportunity to use them for Judge Geese met them in the middle of the hangar, a sizable group of soldiers surrounding him. 
Your Majesty does not disappoint, he said, sounding deliberately bored. Ever quick to spurn an honorable surrender, as was your father. You know nothing of my father. Ashalia growled in reply. Such a great shame, he continued with a small laugh. I must confess, I thought you the one who would help us restore peace to Dalmasca. The guards spread out silently, moving behind the group of escapees and shutting the doors they entered through, leaving only open air on either side and geese at the front. No matter, the judge continued, taking a glowing piece of magicite from his pocket. We hold the proof of your royal lineage, a maid of passing resemblance will serve our purposes now. He triggered the stone's energy, releasing it upon the group in what should by all means have been a killing blow, but the streaming bolts of power that lit the room did no damage, instead fizzling out in the air and descending upon Pinello's hand. What was that? Vaughn asked at length. The Nathisite, she whispered breathlessly, examining the stone she held as it absorbed the last of the deadly light. Damn it, Monty! Geese groaned, drawing his sword. Ashalia and her bodyguards met the gesture, but before the opposing forces could come to blows, a shout sounded from the right of the hangar. Vaughn! He turned frantically in search of the voice. Fran. Down here. She replied as an Atomos hovered near the docked ships beside them. Hurry up. The others made a dash for the ship without question as the soldiers descended upon them, but Vaughn remained wary. We can't trust them. He exclaimed. Like you couldn't trust me? Asked Bosch. You can't choose your rescuers, Ashalia added as she leapt from the edge of the dock and into the open hatch of the tiny ship below. Vaughn groaned, but nevertheless waved his sister on, and she clutched her nephysite extra tight and jumped, the hem of her Arcadian dress fluttering behind her. The men went last just in time to avert battle with a full squad of Arcadian soldiers, and the small craft took off, agilely negotiating the other ships within range and using its pre-assigned clearance to make an all-too-easy escape. Fran met them at the top hatch, closing it once they had all entered, but offered no explanation as she led them to the cockpit. What the hell was that? Vaughn demanded. You're welcome, she replied. Where is he? He pressed. I'll kick his ass. This is not a good time to start with him, she explained. He is displeased that they have given us an Atomos. All skiff, no ship, he says, hardly fit for a leading man. Who? Asked the princess. Before her question could be addressed, they entered the cramped cockpit, finding Bolthir at the controls. Bolthir, you lying bastard! Vaughn shouted. It's good to see you, too, the pirate replied. You almost got the princess killed! Bosch growled. If it weren't for you, Azelas added. They wouldn't even know she's a royal. So you are the late princess, then? Asked Bolthir. Fancy that. The gods jest, said Fran, taking a seat beside him. He laughed. Tell them to leave me out this time. You're the one responsible for the Empire's possession of the Dusk Shard. Ashalia asked. More or less, Balthier answered. What? Pinello stepped in, reaching for her pocket. But I've got the dusk shard right. Pulling her hand out from the folds of her skirt, 
she found herself to be in possession of a simple grey rock, commonly found in the Lhasa mines and similar to the Dusk Shard only in size and weight. Here, she finished jadedly. Sorry, love, said Balthier. Had to be done. Vaughn held his head and grit his teeth. Despite the recent events, even he had to admit that Balthier stood at the top of his game as a pirate. But on the bright side, he had indeed obeyed the law of exchange. This had better be your way of apologizing. Vaughn muttered. Are you mad? Balthier asked with a smirk. If I were to apologize for anything, I'd first have to regret it. Regardless of your actions in the past, Ash alias sighed. I suppose we owe you our gratitude. Balthier's smile widened. I'm a businessman, darling, not a philanthropist, we've already contacted the Marquis and he'll be happy to buy you back. What? She snarled. Vaughn folded his arms. So you're a bounty hunter now? If you can't beat them, join them. Balthier beamed. This has been our most profitable day to date, added Fran. So, wait a minute, said Pinello. Did he screw us over or not? Vaughn rolled his eyes.